As the flu outbreak continues to grow, Mexican immigrants in the U.S. are worried about the well-being of the relatives on the other side of the border. Well, I have family there, my two daughters, my wife, siblings, so I do get worried. Other than that, if it doesn't get out of hand, that's all. I have my parents and siblings in Mexico, so of course I do worry about them. And all the people who are dying there. And the consequences of the spread of the virus are already being felt in the travel industry. Afraid to travel, people are not only flying less, but also canceling their tickets. Just like some people have come to buy, many have come to cancel their tickets because of the danger, out of fear of getting sick. But business is good for the pharmaceutical industry, where supplies are actually running out and shelves are being left empty. People are looking for face masks, antibacterial soap, Purell. That's what everybody's looking for right now, but it's hard to get. The guy who brings our merchandise doesn't have that in stock. People are scared and trying to buy those products, but they are scarce. As I mentioned earlier, Ray Suarez is in Mexico City covering this crisis. Welcome, Ray. What's the scene like in Mexico right now? Marlena, it's good to be with you. The president of Mexico, Felipe Calderón, told his countrymen over the last few days that it's too soon to declare victory in the struggle against the H1N1 flu. But judging from the tone of communications from his office, from the office of the Secretary of Health, from the office of the mayor of Mexico City, the leadership here does believe the country has turned a corner in its battle against the flu. Over the last several days, the death toll has crept up into the 40s. And that's because there is a backlog of lab cases. Mexico's labs could not handle the overwhelming number of samples that had to be screened for the flu. They've been sent to labs all over the Western Hemisphere for analysis. And now, one by one, new confirmations of deaths from the flu are coming. There are, in addition, hundreds more suspected deaths that may never be confirmed because the people died and were buried before tissue and fluid samples were taken that could have ruled in or ruled out a death from the swine flu. Let's take a look at the effects in several other sectors. In business, the country has begun to spring back to life after the emergency period. Days and days when businesses were closed, people were encouraged to stay out of each other's company and stay out of each other's way. Mexico, this bustling, chaotic place of 22 million people, was like a ghost town and you could zip around town in your car and know that you weren't going to hit traffic anywhere. Restaurants were empty. Shutters were down in shops all over the country. It was really, for anyone who had been here before, an odd and sometimes eerie sight to see the place so quiet, see the place, uh, the place so empty, uh, see places that you knew to be places of busyness and life so deserted. But now the capital has begun to uh, come back to life, spring back into business, though it must be admitted that uh, many of the people who took a severe economic hit over the last two weeks are counting up the losses and saying it's going to take them a long time to recover. I spoke to a haberdasher here in the capital, a man who sold men's suits, and he said, well, yes, while it's true that delayed purchases are not going to go away, people who needed clothing are still going to need it, his customers probably were on short wages or no wages over the last 12 days and simply won't have the money they need to buy clothing from him because the money they may have intended to use for that purpose they used instead for the daily necessities of life. So he sees that as a total loss. I interviewed one restaurant owner in the past several days who said the closures came at the worst possible time because he had stocked up with food for the weekend and instead had to give it to his employees because he simply could not sell it. Restaurants were only allowed to serve food to take out, para llevar, and just no customers arrived to take that food out. And again, it was a loss he had to write off. Those are customers he will never see again. And in fact, there are new restrictions in place now that the red alert has been lifted that say that the tables in restaurants have to be further apart, that there can be fewer diners in a dining room. So even now that these places are open, it's going to be tougher for them to recover. In the early hours of Wednesday morning, a plane arrived from Beijing, 
carrying 136 Mexican citizens who had been quarantined by the Chinese government. They were in cities scattered all over Mexico, but were eventually concentrated in one hotel, kept almost as prisoners until they could leave the country. The government here has very, been very critical of China, and to show symbolically uh, its displeasure with the Chinese government, no less than the first lady of Mexico, Felipe Calderon's wife, Margarita Zavala, went to meet those Mexican citizens when they came back to the airport this morning. In politics, uh, the government is uh, finding it very difficult to declare victory yet, but you can tell they're pleased with the way things have gone. This showed a new Mexico to the world, in the words of one political analyst, who said that the low expectations that the world might have brought to Mexico in the past in a crisis like this one were simply far outstripped this time by the seriousness, the thoroughness, and the speed of the response once Mexican health officials knew what they were dealing with uh, in the fight against the flu. So all in all, uh, the deaths will continue. In the words of the Secretary of Health, this disease has been diminished but will not be eliminated. In the words of the mayor of Mexico City, uh, the imminent danger is over, the emergency is over, but now we have to live alongside this virus. So uh, certainly a change here. People are going to be more cautious. They've been asked to keep those old social distancing measures in place, masks, washing hands frequently, staying out of crowded places. Uh, but staying out of a crowded place in Mexico City is a pretty tough thing to do once the city's back up and in operation. Back to you in the studios in Washington.